So we talked about um, dominant and recessive, which we gave the big A and the little A characters to. Next thing we talk about is where both of the alleles are expressed in the phenotype, and this is called codominant. Because it's codominant, everything gets a capital letter. And also we put a big C to make it clear that it's codominant. Now often this is coat colour questions. So if we had a, for instance, a red cow, here is a cow, and we cross this with a white cow, well we'll do it grey because white on a white background would be difficult to do. We cross with a red cow with a white cow, and we produce a pinky purpley cow. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the two parental phenotypes. One is red, one is white, white, and we produce a pinky purpley cow. So what we've got here is the phenotype of the heterozygote is intermediate between the two parental phenotypes. So it's halfway between the two. So what's going on here is that we've got a characteristic for red and we've got a characteristic for white. And these alleles are codominant. So in the pink or purple cow, we've got because both are expressed, so the red and the white gives us the pinky purple cow. So a codominant one is where both of the alleles are expressed in the phenotype. Dominant is where if you possess the allele, it's expressed, and recessive is only expressed if it's the only allele present. So if it's AA, it's the only allele present and it's expressed. Now. If we took this pink cow, the purple cow, and we cross it with another pink or purple cow, what are we going to get for the ratio of the offspring? So we produce, put a circle around it, put a circle around it, other side of the planet square. We fertilise them, and as you correctly said, we get a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of the uh, phenotype, because it's codominant. So codominant is pretty easy. The next form of codominant is incomplete dominance. In this case, the letter R. Now, incomplete dominance is applied to multiple alleles in blood groups. So in blood groups, you can be phenotypically blood group A, or B, or AB, or O. This is because this is a case of multiple alleles, which means that within a gene pool there are more than two alleles. So the alleles that exist are the IA allele, which is co-dominant to the IB allele, but both are dominant to the IO allele. So, look at some genotypes. If you are blood group A, then what could be your genotype? AB. Nope, it's IA, IO, or IA, IA. If your blood group AB, then your genotype must be that you have an A allele and a B allele, because they're both expressed because they're codominant. So the I stands for incomplete dominant, because here A is dominant over O, but here A is equal to B. Because they're codominant, when you've got an A and a B, they're both made and that produces the AB blood group. But when you've got an A and an O, you just make A. Because but, it was O like recessive? Yeah, O is 
O is recessive to A and B, whereas A is equal is codominant with A and B. Okay, now if you are blood group O, then you must be I O I O. And if you are blood group B, then you must be I O I B or I be. Happy with that? Yeah. Right. Now, classic questions here. If you have somebody who is blood group A and they cross with somebody who is blood group B, they produce a child who is B and a child who is O. The person who is blood group A jumps up and down and says, that can't possibly be my child. You must have been off with another man. Because I am blood group A and you are blood group B. How can we produce an O child and a B child? This is wrong. Mm -hmm. You have been playing away. Now, the person who is blood group B, who has been paying attention in genetics lessons, says, well, let's look at the genotypes that must be the case. Now, for this person to be blood group O, this child, then this has to be this genotype. Now, where do you get each gamete from? You get one gamete from this parent, and you get one gamete from this parent. So, this must be, have an I-O, and this one must have an I-O. Yeah, because one came from each parent. Now, for this person to be... For this person to be I-B, they have to have the B. So, this person must have the B. Now... We'll show you that I made that B. Oh, sorry. Well, that's because this, this B, this O here, has gone into this person there. And that has come from this person there. Yeah, but I thought if that person has the B, yeah. how come because that I was the dominant one? If they no, 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 no. If this person has the B, then half of their gametes are going to have B. Okay. And then half of them aren't, because this person is I O I B. So they are blood group, as you correctly said, B, and this one is blood group A. Now, if this person is blood group A, they must also have the I-A allele. Okay? Now, the reason for this, and this person must be I-O. So we can produce the A, the B, and the O phenotypes, because if we look at those parents, and if we make a Punnett square, then from the A person, here are the gametes, and from the B person, here are the gametes, and that's going to produce IO, IO, who is going to be blood group what? IO. I A, I O, it's going to be blood group A, it's going to produce I O, I B, who's going to be blood group B, and it's going to produce I A, I B, who's going to be blood group A, B. So this shows that how from the A parent and the B parent, you're able to produce an O, an I A, an A, an A, B, and an O, so here you've got the B and here you've got the O.